to a schedule or anything like that. Um, and also Rob should be in here in a second, but I'm gonna just start talking because uh, there's a lot of you in this room. <laughs> Apparently you think we're gonna talk about something interesting. Um, <laughs> hopefully hopefully we'll, uh, we'll, we'll uh, do that. So, um, so I'm Monty Taylor. Uh, uh, Rob Hirschfeld from, I'm um, from Hewlett Packard, also been working on OpenStack for uh, as long as OpenStack has existed. Um, uh, do lots of various things for it, and I won't go into all that, because that's just boring me talking about myself, narcissistic as I might be. Uh, Rob Hirschfeld from Dell will be in here um, uh, any minute now, I promise. Uh, or he might be in here and invisible just standing next to me. Uh, he likes to do tricky things like that. Um, and what we want to talk about is, um, uh, is about is about OpenStack reference architectures and about <coughs> how we can there's several things in here, but how, how we can actually work together on uh, on OpenStack deployments using uh, the technology that we have inside of OpenStack um, as baselines for uh, both delivering that and testing um, people's uh, people's deployments against those things. Um, uh, and unfortunately, I, th I think I can get through some of these slides for Rob, but the, some of these are his, uh, and so I might just look at them dumbly. Um, but that's how uh, shared things go. Um, so. This is all starting from the, from the idea of interoperable OpenStack Hub. Um, it, it turns out that the value proposition of OpenStack, the whole reason that there's 3,000 people uh, in the Oregon Convention Center, uh, I think actually probably more than 3,000 because there's also a teacher's conference over there, um, but I don't think they're here for OpenStack. Uh, they might be, actually, they should be. They should be teaching their kids OpenStack. Um, but the value proposition is that, um, is that we have multiple interoperable clouds. It's not that OpenStack is software that is going to allow HP to stand up a cloud that is going to uh, win all of the cloud stuff. Like, that's not the idea. The idea is that HP is gonna stand up a cloud and Rackspace is gonna stand up a cloud and Aptera in, in Australia is gonna stand up a cloud and DreamHost is gonna stand up a cloud and consumers of those clouds uh, can actually consume all of them um, and, and do that in, a, in a, an interoperable way because that's, it turns out, what people want. They don't wanna be locked into one vendor. Uh, they want to have the benefit of um, of being able to, to, to have an ecosystem of, um, uh, of places where they can run their, their workloads. Um, so that's all well and good. I don't know if you guys noticed, but there's a lot of configuration options in, in OpenStack. Um, <laughs> I don't know how we did that, but, uh, but there's, a, there's a lot of them and they, they make things sort of different. Um, uh, so, and I'll get to that in a second. Um, but uh, but we, we wanna make sure that we've got uh, interoperable. Oh, look at that, John. Sorry. Um, that's fine, you know, I'm sure there was somebody interesting about Ladies and gentlemen, Rob Hirschfeld. Um, uh, he's an ABR. So, uh, so in order to do that, we've we've got to um, uh, we need to uh, yeah, that's Rob's slide. So I'm gonna actually gonna wait for him. Um, allows us to share things better and allows us to get that ecosystem up and going. And look at that, ha ha. Yeah, oh and I'm just <laughs> no. <laughs> and we're to and we're to your and we're to your little this slide. Oh, so this, this slide take it away. So if you guys haven't learned this yet, you need to, this, this is the take home slide that we use uh, a lot, is that we can get you software, OpenStack's got a ton of that, you get your hardware, you can go buy that, that's a commodity. Turns um, out we both sell that. <laughs> Don't know if you noticed that or not, but yeah. It's good stuff too. Also it interoperates, so your servers work the same as mine. That's the Isn't that neat? The, the thing that, that trips people up is operations. And so you know, usually I slow the slides, it's actually 50% ops. And what we've been doing is codifying ops using DevOps and making things repeatable. So the, the challenge is we can sell you hardware that's gonna interoperate, which is awesome, right? We can all use the same software base, great, but if we wanna share tips, if we didn't deploy it the same way, likely we're not gonna make any progress. So I, I, I touched on this a little bit in the, in the first slide, um, but why it's important to, to share the operational knowledge um, is, that, is that, like I said before, if, if we've got these multiple vendors that are deploying clouds, um, then if they are interoperable, then we actually wind up with, with an OpenStack cloud, right? It's, some of it is run by HP, some of it is run by, by Rackspace, and some, some is run by other people. Um, and and each, each of the zones in that cloud are, are just different availability zones in, in sort of a larger, a larger worldwide 
sort of application um, or, the, or the web is the idea works with web. Which um, makes, that scales to the back. makes sense if you think, you know, we like to talk about OpenStack being the operating system for a data center, just like the internet brings multiple servers together, we want to bring multiple data centers right. together. So, but if we, if we can't, if we can't deploy this consistently, right, like, because we're really big into testing things in the OpenStack world, turns out. Um, if we can't deploy it consistently, uh, then we certainly can't test it, right? We can't, we can't tell you that it's any good if we don't know how to install the darn thing in the first place. Um, and, and then past that, that's all well and good for the one. I mean, everybody, I think, knows that we install OpenStack 700 times a day uh, in part of the CI system uh, using DevStack, but I'm pretty sure most of you aren't deploying OpenStack using DevStack. At least you, I certainly hope you're not. Um, and uh, so we probably have different deployments. We need to be able to compare those, right? We need to be able to test that those work uh, with each other. I should, I forgot to mention, there's a panel today on interoperability at 520. Uh, you all should come to that. Um, uh, and that's about the interoperability, about being able to compare different people's deployments. And, and this is about getting help, too, right? We see a significant number of people wanting to help, wanting to get help. The first question you ask is, how did you deploy it? Mm -hmm. And so, if you can't tell me how you deployed it, or I have to parse a long document and then hope it's right and it's not complete, you don't get the, the level of support and, and ease of use that we want in the OpenStack community, right? Because I'll tell you from my experience, a significant number of the bugs that we encounter in the field have nothing to do with the code base. Right. They have to do with somebody not having the right IP address on an on a individual node or a, a wiring, it's, 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 it could be anything, right? You used wrong VLAN. VLAN, yeah, didn't notice that your, you know, Mellanox card had weird drivers. Um, <laughs> right. You know, the distro told you the drivers were included in the kernel and they were not. Um, and, and things this, like that, yeah. This is the tee up for the open operations slide. Um, and open, open operations is sort of this vision that uh, started a couple of years ago now with, uh, at a, at, for me, um, and I'll, I'll take Jim Staten, uh, Staten 7, uh, uh, he and I went back and forth a little bit on this emerging trend, which is we can take these open these operation scripts, we can take reference architectures that are published, and we can compare things. And if we can compare things, it's not just that the code is open, it's actually the operations are open. Because there's very little value that you're gonna get if you manage to get to a thousand node scale one way and somebody else does it a different way, right? At the time, uh, a major cloud provider was <laughs> having a series of outages and they were very black box. And while they were very good about saying, hey, here's what happened at the end, nobody could actually go in and say, yeah, if you'd done it this way or that way, you know, it was never exposed. Right. So even back at the, at the Cactus days, the idea that we could share tips and improve each other's operations by being visible and transparent about that was really attractive. It was, it was an added thing that OpenStack, really from the very start, has been part, it's been part of our culture. Right, and so what we wanna do is we wanna we want to share. We want to share the what, right? We want to share the the description of what it is that you're going to install. I want to be able to tell you, you know, I installed a uh, hundred compute nodes that are all running KVM, and we're using flat DHCP, and you know, and we are using Cinder with you know with Ceph backend, and we're using Glance, and we've got a you know we've got a Swift ring, and blah blah blah. These are all what's, right? Like they're they're not they're not telling you anything about what machines I've got racked in the in, in the data center. They're not telling you specifically about like what my you know memory thresholds in my SQL are, right. but I can tell you that I'm running my SQL and not Postgres, right? Like these are all these are all the what's of, of what you're doing, and understanding that there are going to be environment specific config, but that needs to be environment specific config, not environment specific how to install my SQL, because I got to tell you that's not very interesting. Um, you're not going to provide value add for your cloud end user customers by installing the crap out of my SQL. Like it's just not going to. Um, and that's that's sort of the next the next point there is that your your deployment isn't as different as you think it is right it's it's right. we're all beautiful and unique snowflakes um, except that we're all snowflakes we're all snowflakes right and and um, so the the point one of the points with this is there's times when it's really valuable to be distinct and unique totally. and there's times when it's going to cost you a lot of money and time and pain and what we want people to do is do the things that are unique and differentiated where it's valuable and not and stop. And what my experience is is that a lot of times people do things that are snowflaked because nobody said, here's another way to do it, right? Yeah. There's here's no best practice, there's it. no pattern, yeah. right? 
Uh, and I know from, I was doing uh, VMware virtualization way, way back, 15 years now. And VMware took off when there was a pattern, the data center consolidation pattern with a SAN that sold a lot of stuff for EMC. And that, that pattern hockey stick virtualization adoption. And we have the same challenge, right? For, for everybody here to be successful with OpenStack, we have to have patterns that are consistent and repeatable. Um, so, so this is this is about and, and another thing to inject. This this is about getting getting all this op stuff located in inside of OpenStack. OpenStack is, is turned into a really great community for for sharing things, right? Like we our companies can collaborate on OpenStack. Our companies most of the time don't call each other up on the phone for something that isn't OpenStack. I'm not like, hey, how are you guys doing MySQL? Like it's just not it's not that doesn't happen. Um, but we can do it here, uh, and so we right. should take advantage of that, right? Um, because then, then those of us in the technical world who know that we need to collaborate can get our jobs done uh, and not worry about the folks saying, oh, nice, well, just, you know, don't tell Dell. Uh, just, you know. but, but, the problem, but there is a problem in that we have forked deployment yeah. and ops. All and, and so the reason why we're here is, and part of this is your responsibility, is to help put community pressure on these ops forks to bring them back into compliance because you don't want to have to go to HP's or Dell's or Rackspace or Mirantis or Piston or Nebula. I mean, there's, there's all these different ways of doing things, right? Some of them you want to be proprietary, totally. but if we can avoid it and you can get comp comp uh, compatible operations. Yeah. Like the more of that is compatible, yeah. So, um, so this is why we're talking about, about um, uh, he likes acronyms, so so RAs. I like funny pictures. Uh, he also likes funny pictures. He's all the pictures in here come from from Rob, and he's really good at those. Um, uh, so it's not a it's not a resident advisor or a rich aunt. Uh, I wish it was a rich aunt. That'd be great. Um, oh, I didn't even notice that. That's just I think you might have violated the code of conduct there. Um, uh, <laughs> just I don't even sense. All right, I'm, I'm just gonna fixate on that for a second. Uh, I'm, okay, anyway. I'll um, take over. You can so we had, a, we had a long conversation actually about a half an hour ago outside uh, about whether we should be calling this a re reference architecture or a reference implementation. Um, and, uh, and, and what we're talking about here is a, is a description of an OpenStack, uh, an OpenStack deployment, right? Which is, which is why the argument was being made that, that this should be called reference implementation. Um, but, I, but I think that especially in the OpenStack world, we don't really do a lot of specking out like a 500 page document and having that be like a, 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 a description of something and then writing a whole bunch of code. We're, we're sort of an implementation uh, is, the, is, the, is the architecture type right. of people, uh, for better or for worse, that's just how it is. Um, and so what we want is we want something practical. We want, we want a, a description that can be installed, uh, that, can be, that can be vetted, that can be tested, that describes a thing. And we probably want more than one of them. It turns out we've got those configuration options for a reason. And, right. um, uh, and, and so having, having different, uh, uh, I think that's the next one, right? That, no, that we're uh, two, uh, two slides. And two slides, yeah. But and I, don't wanna, I don't want us to read, read down the slides no, too no, much. No, no. The, the point about implementation or architecture is it's what people need, right? right. People, people ask, when, when somebody asks me for our reference architecture, they're not asking for a architecture. What they're really asking for is, show me something that you have tested and works and is repeatable, and that I know if I follow your directions, I'll end up with a cake, yeah. right? Not, here's the stuff that I think in my science lab yeah. project is gonna be a good thing. And so, this is why we, we favored the, yeah. <laughs> flour and eggs bind together really nicely. They, they do. They do. Like they also make and flour and egg mush. <laughs> and so the, the point with this, and this is going to come up as a theme, right, is that we're talking about something that's tested, repeatable, and usable, which is why implementation makes sense. People call that a reference architecture because it sounds really highfalutin. Yeah. But what, what people buy is a reference implementation. What we test is a reference implementation. And, and Monty and I both love the word test. We do. It's important. You should test things. Test. Otherwise, they don't work. Um, and so this this leads us to, to a, a, a program we've been we've been putting together. Um, uh, there is uh, there is an empty uh, GitHub repo. Um, we invite all of you to submit pull requests. 
uh, uh, eventually, eventually it'll be a Garrett repo, and you can submit. Uh, but you know, whatever. Mackenzie doesn't want it there yet. Anyway, so there's actually going to be two two different elements to this, um, and th this actually references um, uh, one of them. Uh, ref stack as a, as a program has a couple of facets. One of them is the reference architecture, the reference implementations that we're talking about, which means that I can in OpenStack's infrastructure spin one up. And we can run tests against it, and we can verify that it is what we say that it is. Right. It works. Um, on the other hand, um, and, and this is the code that, that Joshua McKenzie is putting into uh, into the ref stack repo, or you all will, um, is is a way to um, uh, a, a system by which people who are working on clouds can submit endpoints in into into the upstream system to have the same testing that we run against one of the reference implementations that we spin up. Run against run against your thing, so we can say, "Hey, we made architecture A over here, and you're claiming to be architecture A. Uh, how about we double check and make sure that that's in fact the case?" Um, which is which is then a, a, um, a sort of service that we can we can provide to to help ensure that that when people say that they're interoperable, that they actually that they actually are. One of the things that that is going here, and the you know, I did a talk earlier about trying to get to upgrade, and actually, I think my destiny is this this summit is to talk about things aspirational aspirational yeah. discussions. One of the things about that is that there's a connection of things that we have to be able to do to achieve these big goals, right? Of having inner 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 version upgrades that are smooth and safe and and small step. And one of those things is that we have to be able to know what you're upgrading from and to from an implementation perspective. So this is, ne is a necessary ingredient for us to start accomplishing you know, a, a system-wide repeatable upgrade process. And so, so the other part of this, uh, so, so, so McKinsey's thing there is the, is the register your endpoints against our testing. Right. Um, the, the first one is the, is the actual definition of the things themselves. And, and one of the things that we're looking at really strongly, and this is the uh, some of the guys in the Triple O uh, team have been working on this, and, and there's other guys working on this as well. This is defining what an OpenStack architecture implementation is in OpenStack terms, right? Because part of the problem that we have is we could define this by in a lot of Chef recipes or a lot of Puppet modules. The problem is, is that half of you can read the Chef recipes, and half of you can read the Puppet modules, and half of you can't read either, and half of you can read both. Um, and and unfortunately, that's that doesn't lead us anywhere. That leads us into religious wars over over tooling and that's ridiculous. Turns out we're all here to work on OpenStack, so that's actually probably a pretty fair, uh, a, a pretty fair set of, of, of verbiage to, to use to describe the thing that we're doing. Um, I'll take. Go for it. So here's, this is, we, <laughs> the, the conversation we're. I want to eat all of that. Mm. So the, the, the trick is Monty and I sat down, actually it's the whole board, um, Josh was really involved in this, um, and loved this idea at the last board meeting, the one in uh, February. Nice. Loved it. We immediately stubbed our toes on, okay, well, how do we do this, right? There's 20 ways that are valid. We, one, we can't have 20. And so we, we, start, we came up with this concept of flavors, right? And, and we didn't have a better word than flavors. Oh, and a favor. Everything matters in a favor. Every <laughs> so uh, one of the things, and, and we actually want to try and keep running through the slides quickly so that we have time for discussion, but as, a, as you know, what we need people to think about is what makes a good flavor, right? Is it networking, hypervisor, workload? We actually have a set of criteria, yep, this one, where what we're trying to, trying to accomplish with a flavor to make it useful is that we want to make sure very carefully that two clouds of the same flavor should be able to interoperate. We chose not to say must, but should. And so if you go to a public cloud and say, I am using the chocolate flavor and I've deployed the chocolate flavor, you expect your scripts, your deployments, hopefully your VMs, your, your workloads should transition between the same flavors, right? And we might be able to say that chocolate and mint chocolate chip are also compatible. Maybe so, yeah. Um, and so we, we feel like that's important from a consumption perspective. We also feel like it's really important that operators can compare flavors. So if, if you're using the, the vanilla flavor of OpenStack and somebody else is using the vanilla flavor of OpenStack, 
you should be able to have a very deep conversation about that. Chocolate, you probably will have some no, things. But it turns out deploying Zen server and deploying KVM are different. <coughs> you know? So your operator scripts to deploy Zen server instances might not be as relevant to, uh, to bootstrapping a machine to be able to do libvirt KVM, right? Just, I mean, some of them might be, but some of them probably won't be. But one of the fun things about this is that we might be able to come in and say, if you change these components, then KVM and, and Zen might actually be able to be converged into a single flavor. Yeah. And that is good for everybody, right? That, that adds a lot of value. And so we, want, we don't want to start with 20 flavors and, and then go to 40 should be. Yeah, that's, that's just exactly as it said on the slide, is exactly right. There should be a few, as few of them as possible. Like multiple flavors is not necessarily the best thing for, right. for, for the end users. Um, so we might wind up with a, with a table. This is the thing that, that um, we, like, there's a lot of question marks in here for a reason. Uh, this is, we're at the beginning of this process, right? We're at the beginning of figuring out what, what should go in here and how we should define this and, and, and everything. Um, so. I said earlier that we wanted to define this in terms of, uh, in terms of OpenStack language, right? What well, turns out, uh, turns out we've got this thing called Heat now. Uh, I don't know if any of you've heard of it. It seems like you all have because everyone in the world was in all of the Heat sessions yesterday, um, which is great. Uh, it's the it's the new piece of orchestration inside of OpenStack. Um, and uh, for those of you that aren't that aren't familiar with it, uh, I was joking earlier that it's sort of like a make file for cloud applications, which um, he made me put on the slide. Um, but I think that's actually right because it is actually a it's a it's a it's a dependency graph uh, that knows how to spin up multi-node uh, applications. So it's not just about hey, give me a server. Uh, it's about hey, I've got this service, I've got this application that takes I don't know twenty servers that all have to interoperate and 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 get put out in in order and in, in sequence and relate to each other. Um, and and you you describe your your top level application that way. It's it's right back to the same analogy of you know, OpenStack is the operating system for your data center, right? Yeah. You need a make file. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta build your application and run it on that, on that operating system. Um, and, and, and actually, but one of the things that, that I believe very strongly and we've seen is that there's really not that much difference between, it, there is no difference between an application that you would deploy on OpenStack and OpenStack itself as an application that you would deploy on your infrastructure, right? The Triple yeah. O project, exactly. um, Turn, the tooling. Turns out OpenStack is a really complicated application, but it is nonetheless a multi-node application that has dependencies that need to be deployed in order. So if we've got an orchestration tool that knows how to describe uh, multi-node applications that have dependencies that need to be deployed in order, then maybe we can describe ourselves using ourselves uh, and then all wink out of existence in a singularity. Um, it'd be great. Um, so uh, so I, I, this is just more of the, of the same thing. Um, Heat will go around provisioning nodes and doing things. It will chunk some configuration metadata onto them, which is great. Uh, it'll, it'll trigger um, things to tell you that, that it has swapped new metadata down uh, and then uh, report uh, the node report back. This is actually, there's, there's OpenStack, very OpenStack specific ways that we can, that we can uh, describe rolling this, this all out without uh, going down into the into the world of Chef and Puppet and stuff because it turns out we've got a gating infrastructure and a lot of developers and this becomes religiously problematic. However, some of you out there might like Chef or Puppet uh, and might have a lot baked into it or you might be doing things other than OpenStack in your world um, and, and, and need to do that. And so, so what we're talking about here is a way to describe what we need to do and have that be a full description so it's not missing bits but also have that break apart in the right places so that uh, if you are, if you are, if you have a vested interest in in thinking about some of the elements of some of your your specific specializations locally, uh, that you can actually still do that in, in the way that you want to. How many, by show of hands, how many people are familiar with the Heat project? That's, That's awesome. How That's many really how many people are actively tracking it beyond familiarity? Not that not. How as many people many. have it deployed in the public cloud? Uh, uh, sort of. Uh, uh, I would be impressed. So. What? <laughs> No. 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 I have not deployed it in the public cloud. No, and I, I don't have any, any, I don't have any public so clouds. So this is, the, um, but, it's but this is, you know, he, just like we're trying to upstream and, and there's an investment that, that my team's making and I'll, I know other teams are making to upstream what we're doing from an operations perspective. Heat represents, you know, some consolidation back to try and figure out the commonalities with this. So 
it's, this is an important thing, right? What we want to be able to do is, is change the conversation from I'm, I'm working on this way to do it to I'm collaborating with a more general way that, that we can transcend. Uh, and then it's, what's fun is, you know, I know from talking to customers I deal with, they don't care whether they're deploying, you know, the same team is deploying applications and deploying OpenStack, right? The same tool chains, the same problems, the, you know, a lot of those things are very similar. And it doesn't help us to bifurcate. There's a there's a a, a a good meme that's been going around about using the same tools to deploy your cloud that you use to deploy things in your cloud. Um, basically, it's like you're just saying that that should be OpenStack as the tool that that should be. Um, so anyway, so this gets us to uh, sort of the final little bit, uh, which is that what we want is we want inter interoperability. We want the nirvana of interoperability, uh, which is and actually this is really this is the second time uh, that that Eastern philosophy has come up uh, today in conversations around OpenStack. I'm not really sure what that was chatting with Troy Toman earlier about um, uh, needing to teach uh, companies the, the sort of Zen approach of not being able to achieve something by reaching for it, but instead by letting go and, and letting it come to you. Um, so it's very Zen. Yeah, it's very Zen. It's very Zen. Um, so it's, 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 we won't diverge here. Um, uh, I want to repeat this again, though. We've got a panel on Tuesday at 520. Um, that will be a bunch of us talking about how we can get uh, specifically to the interoperability thing. And, and so the, the closing, uh, is this our last slide? So awesome. Then we go to the discussion. Yeah. So here's the idea. Interoperability is not, a, is not an end thing. It's a sustaining process. Yeah. It's not a release feature that we're going to go at the, you know, the next summit and stand up and say, we have now achieved interoperability. interoperability. Yay, we won. We're done. <laughs> uh, it, it's like a lot of things that make OpenStack a, a, a successful project is it's a process. It's things that we need to bake into our DNA and what we do. Right, we're, we're, we're establishing things like shared architecture for, with, through RefStack, RefStack open operations through upstreaming the DevOps and making a home inside of OpenStack's GitHub for the chef and the puppet and, the, and, and Juju and all, all the pieces that deploy OpenStack. We're comprehensive testing, which is essential in this, right? Um, and then ultimately having the community participate and demand it, right? Because all this will fall apart if we have a lot of people who say, uh, I don't want to participate. Yeah. Just tell me what to do, and I'll I'll go buy it. Yeah. It. We want people to do that too because we want vendors to make money. Yeah. But I I, I'm my ass sales guys assuming that you're here in yeah. this room because you want to participate in this process or are a vendor, and you don't want to repeat efforts. You want to be. You want to let let the let the community work together on some things, and then yeah. we'll we'll help users. Yeah. And in fact, I'd like to I'd like to to. To underscore that last thing is that is that, that community participation is the is the uh, it's the other the other meme that keeps coming up is that is the, the community is the community is us the community isn't isn't those guys who are going to write some software and give it to me um, it's 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 all of us doing it together uh, and and driving features it's pretty easy you just go and do it and and one of the things that's a challenge and I think everybody in this room should should feel challenged for this is to take what there is their corporate or they're, they're, they're financial, and find ways that we can collaborate together and, and go after the, the, bigger, the bigger fish, right? Yeah. Not repeat efforts, not create fracturing where it's in our best interest. Yeah. And, and I think we've just spent all this time trying to help you, you know, make the case that it's in our best interest yeah. to work together on operations. Yeah, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna compete with Rob to try and win the market that we have right now. I'm gonna work with Rob to grow the market that we have right now. Um, so that by doing that, each of our share of it gets bigger. Um, exactly right. So anyway, uh, with that, it was all intended to be the beginning of a conversation with some people about what, uh, how this might, how this might work out. So if there are any questions or thoughts, or there seem to be many hands, I think there is a. There's microphone a microphone right there. If you there's, would there's queue up with the microphone. Lights up here too. So and it's exciting. we would love to take suggestions on flavors. Yeah. Um, Excellent question. Yeah, good question. Uh, it's, so, so let me let me answer that squirrely, and then I'll, I'll let him take over. Um, this <laughs> this started actually. Our conversation about this started in in part of a conversation about in, in the board about how we deal with uh, how we deal with brand and how we deal with trademark and how we deal with uh, with naming. At what point do you yeah. get to call yourself an OpenStack cloud? Right. It's it's sort of that question, which is a tricky question because it's really configurable. 
and this led us this led us down the down the road to this. So there hasn't been a formal decision about this as it relates to a formal trademark policy uh, or, or from a formal certification policy. Um, but the thinking here certainly did spring out of discussions about that. Uh, so it's, it's, um, it's, I, would, I would say that we're, we're moving towards a thing uh, that, that I think that I think Correct. in going with a lot of our stuff starting from implementations rather than from, from descriptions of, of things then, and then trying to come into implementation of that, I think we'd like to have a thing that we can point at that we know is tested and can be tested against and then discuss whether or not that can be a basis of a certification. Right. And so putting, you know, I think both of us are answering, which I like as board members here, this is answering, trying to answer what is OpenStack. Because we have a lot of board discussions that are blocked because we don't have a good answer. Yeah. And then the board will take actions on things that, in, that are blocking community adoption and acceptance. And if certification is doing that, which I believe it might be, then we will be driven to do that. I can't have that conversation yet because I don't have a what is OpenStack definition. Yeah. So we're, we're, we've got a lot of circular dependencies. <laughs> and this is our, our attempts to resolve some of them. I have a question here. You said uh, it is also not only just for deploying the OpenStack, but also deploying application on the OpenStack. So do you think HEAT is going to mark into a pass? Is it going to be a replacement for a pass? Or no, I don't think it'll be a replacement for a, for a PaaS or morph into one. I, I would love to see uh, PaaS solutions that are out there uh, use use heat, right? We've got a, we've got the capability to to describe inside of OpenStack something that's pretty rich with with heat, and so then people that are doing PaaS things, um, rather than going and writing direct Nova calls, uh, for instance, if they if they can if they can have the the sort of interaction between their paths and the cloud uh, be done in, in heat terms, and that sort of makes their job easier in a lot of ways, right? Um, yeah, I have a different definition of a paths than some people do. I, I define a paths by the services that your cloud is offering. And so from that perspective, as OpenStack has more and more services, then we become more of a paths from the services. The actual deployment of, of cap capacity is not the hard part for a paths. It's, doing what Amazon has done very well and have all these ancillary systems that are very sticky and keep you, yeah. that's a pass to me. Yeah. Hey, so um, we've actually been down this road a little ways in our organization and struggled with exactly what you're talking about. Um, the, so we deploy on HP gear. We have SL Gen 7s, SL Gen 8s, and now DL Gen 8s. Some of them have SSDs. Some of them, you know, they have different 10 gig NICs, so different, you know, drivers for this and that, blah, blah, blah. And a lot of times we would deploy a cluster and be like, how do we know if this cluster is like ready to go, ready to ship, happy, or whatever? And it seems like this project is so like vast. What we ended up doing was we would simply deploy the cluster on whatever hardware. Some of them were running blusters, some of them were running stuff. So you get to the point where you're like trying to boil the ocean. I mean, that's just mm -hmm. one vendor, one Correct. stack, right? So exactly. what we ended up doing was we would, once the thing was finished building, we would <coughs> deploy a set of applications on it, run a set of tests against those applications, and if we got expected results, we'd say this thing's good to go. Yeah. I don't really understand how you can build what you're trying to So it, I think that I think actually bringing Linux into it there at the end is, is a really is a really good analogy. Um, you, but the thing the thing you the thing you described is exactly right, right? You, you what you care about at the end of the day is whether or not you can whether or not you can deploy your applications on the on the thing. The thing that we're missing right now from the upstream perspective is we don't have we don't have a thing we can deploy to then do the can you deploy your application test on it so that we've got the baseline for a way for you to say, hey, can I deploy my application on it, right? So we're basically trying to get, get to that thing. And I, th I think that's where you know, Red Hat and, and, and Debian and Ubuntu and, and SUSE are all, are all different, but there is a level to which you, you're pretty sure that you can run Mozilla on them. Right. You know, 
and and so we've got to get we've got to get to a baseline level there so that we can we can test the thing we actually care about. We're we're you clearly know? getting and kicked out. And, we're, and there's, the, the, there's I have a, a I have sea a of people outside answer, of the door. I, I, oh my God. Three word answer for you. We're using we're using heat. Yeah. You've got to get abstraction layer. Yeah. Exactly. Cool. Thanks, guys.